Hello, we're from ChemPraxis, and today we'll be discussing Chemistry Paper 5, Variant 3, October-November 2023. We'll be investigating the reaction between dilute hydrochloric acid and aqueous sodium hydroxide. We'll be conducting two experiments for this. Let's start by filling up a burette with aqueous sodium hydroxide. Record down the initial burette reading. Using a measuring cylinder, pour 25 milliliters of dilute hydrochloric acid into a conical flask. Place the conical flask on a piece of white paper. Next, add 5 drops of methyl orange indicator into the conical flask. Add the aqueous sodium hydroxide from the burette to the conical flask and stir it until the solution changes color. Record the final burette reading. According to the table, we know that it took 25 milliliters of aqueous sodium hydroxide for the dilute hydrochloric acid to change color. After refilling the burette with aqueous sodium hydroxide, use a measuring cylinder to pour 25 milliliters of dilute hydrochloric acid into a conical flask. This time, we're adding 0.5 grams of powdered calcium carbonate into the conical flask. Remember to stir it. Repeat the steps conducted on the first experiment by placing the conical flask on the white towel and add 5 drops of methyl orange indicator into the conical flask. Now add the aqueous sodium hydroxide from the burette to the conical flask and stir it until the solution changes color. Record the final burette reading. Throughout the experiment, we observed that the color changed from red to orange after a certain amount of aqueous sodium hydroxide is added into the dilute hydrochloric acid. However, if we add thymopothalin instead of methyl orange into the solution, it will turn from colorless to blue instead as the solution is a base. In experiment 2, when calcium carbonate reacts with the dilute hydrochloric acid, carbon dioxide will be formed. As the burette was only used for aqueous sodium hydroxide, it is not required to rinse it. However, we must rinse the conical flask to remove any traces of impurities. Drying the conical flask won't have any effect on the volume of aqua sodium hydroxide needed, so it won't be changed. Comparing the volumes of aqua sodium hydroxide needed to reach the endpoint in both experiments, the volume in experiment 1 is higher than experiment 2, and this is because both required different amounts of aqua sodium hydroxide to neutralize it. Don't forget to repeat the experiment so that more accurate results can be achieved. For question 2, we'll be figuring out the contents in solid I and solution J. In the flame test with solid I, we can see that lilac colored flames can be observed.
After separating solution I into four test tubes, add a spatula of zinc powder followed by 5 cm depth of dilute sulfuric acid. Leave the test tube for one minute. The zinc can be seen and the solution becomes violet grey. To the second portion of solution I, add aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise and then in excess. We can see that white precipitate is formed when aqueous sodium hydroxide is added dropwise and it dissolves when in excess. Add about a 1 cm depth of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous silver nitrate. We can see that there is no change to this solution. Add about a 1 cm depth of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate. Leave the test tube to stand for about 1 minute and then we can observe that white precipitate is formed. Throughout our experiment, we know that solid I contains potassium, aluminium, and sulfate. After dividing solution J into three approximately equal portions, test for the pH of the first portion. Based on the color change, we can see that the pH of solution J is around 1 to 3. Add a piece of magnesium ribbon into the second portion of solution J and test for any gas produced. We can see fizzing and lighted splint pops. These results tell us that hydrogen gas is present. Add about a 1 cm depth of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous silver nitrate. We can see that white precipitate is formed. Throughout our experiment, we would know that solution J contains hydrogen and chloride. 